Well, in my last few videos, I've been talking about a medication called Suboxone and opioid withdrawal and all of that. And meanwhile, in another far corner of the internet, Trisha Paytas has been opening up a lot about her mental health struggles as well as her addiction struggles. And one of the reasons I'm making this video is because I have been flooded with requests to talk about this. So let's do this thing. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take a look at what's going on in the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So I'll just address the elephant in the room real quick. I was watching another video critiquing another YouTuber and they were talking about how like you should really give full context in your video. So I will, I'm gonna give you the TLDR. Back in the day, I made quite a few videos about the relationship, the toxic relationship between Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash. She did not like that too much, all right? So she called me out and I'm gonna touch on that in a second because Trisha Paytas said some not so nice things about me and my drug addiction. Um, I've been sober for almost seven years. I'm coming up on seven years, June 23rd of next month. But anyways, Trisha Paytas is not a huge fan of me. So before I get into this, like full disclaimer, like I don't know Trisha Paytas aside from some of our back and forth videos. Um, I mentioned in another video, I've shot her some DMs, no reply, but from what we've heard, that's somewhat normal. Um, but anyways, I'm not trying to diagnose Trisha Paytas. Like at the end of the day, I'm gonna give my opinions based on what I've seen, but I really, really hope that the information that I share in this video can help anybody out there who is struggling with an opioid addiction or if you have a loved one who's struggling with an opioid addiction. So if you think this video can be of use to someone you know, make sure you share it with them, all right? But anyways, I'm going to be talking about both sides of this thing and what's going on with Trisha Paytas. So like, before we get started, like I wanna address everybody out there who's gonna be like, Quit defending Trisha Paytas. Like, listen, listen, all right? Like I mentioned, Trisha Paytas and I have had our own difficulties and everything like that. And she said things like this, which really, really hurt. This is coming from a drug addict, once an addict, always an addict, that is it coming from a drug addict who has a child. So yeah, in that video, in that notorious video, um, fellow YouTube creator iNabber actually did a video on that discussing it. And yeah, the way Trisha Paytas was talking about drug addicts, it wasn't cool. Like it was not cool. And I wanted to get the information out there. Like it's not cool to stigmatize people struggling with addictions. Now, I forgive her for that, especially now seeing that she may be struggling with her own addiction. When she was in that place, like it's, it's, it's not a good thing, but I'm used to it. Like when people get upset, they say what they think is gonna push your buttons and, and hurt you down at the core. And I feel that's why Trisha Paytas was lashing out on me and saying, oh, a drug addict is a, a, drug addict is a drug addict and that's just it, right? Like, I feel like she was trying to hurt me, but I've been called many, many worse things than that. So don't get me wrong, like I have my own issues with Trisha Paytas. But the first thing I wanna address is, and this is something that a lot, a lot of people have been talking to me about in the comments and sending me DMs and everything like that. And then I started going through the comment section on her video and it was absolutely brutal. Like when I first got caught wind that this was going on and people wanted me to um, you know, talk about it and I went to go watch her video, I noticed that like there was a ton of dislikes on it compared to likes and I'm like, wait, what? Like this woman is opening up about her opiate addiction and uh, her withdrawal symptoms. But yeah, in the comments and in my comments too, where people are telling me to look at it, they're saying that she's lying and everything like that. And like, you guys, seriously, like I, I, just, I just think that's like, crossing a line like I, I don't know like she might be lying she may very well be lying about this to get attention and everything like that but first off it's messed up it's messed up all right to accuse somebody of that with no legitimate proof like even back in the day when I was making videos on Trisha Paytas I took clips of what she was saying to form you know my videos all right so what we have to look at, like obviously, is like Trisha Paytas has been very open about her mental health struggles, about her addiction struggles. Like when she came at me, like when she came at me sideways, a bunch of people were pointing out to Trisha Paytas, like, hey, you've talked about your addiction in the past, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if she is legitimately dealing with a drug addiction 
and is opening up about it, all right? But here's the thing, like I get it. I get why people don't believe her. Like with the whole thing that just happened with Nikocado Avocado and everything like that. And um, you know, just the way she's made videos and tweets, you know, like she's still dealing with her breakup with Jason Nash. Like I get why people think she might be lying about this. I get why people think she might just be doing this for attention or to get pity from Jason and all these other things. I understand that, but Again, like I, I've said this in previous videos as well as on my podcast, like we need to stop assuming the worst, all right? And take things in a case by case basis. Because if you look at the history of Trisha Paytas, she has discussed her struggles with mental health as well as substance use issues, all right? But now, now we're just gonna switch gears real quick because it's important like to discuss like, there's some things clearly going on and I have my own opinions on why Trisha Paytas is still struggling with her addiction. And just know, not only does this come from my personal experience of many relapses when it comes to prescription drugs, when it comes to alcohol, things like that, not only does it come from my personal experience, but I was working at a drug and alcohol treatment center for three years and I have literally dealt with thousands of drug addicts and I've seen what works and I see what hasn't worked, all right? So one thing that people asked me to address was Trisha Paytas saying that she's experienced uh, experiencing symptoms of withdrawal and she's been sober for 18 days. And they think that she's lying about that. So first off, kudos to you, Trisha Paytas. Like 18 days is a huge deal. Like if you're somebody in recovery, like I remember like just even one day is a huge deal because if you were a drug addict like me, it was hard to stay sober and clean for even an hour. So if she's 18 days sober, like you go girl, all right? But now addressing the withdrawal symptoms. Not only is there withdrawal, but there is something called PAWS, P-A-W-S, post-acute withdrawal syndrome, all right? And basically what happens, like substance use, like there's a reason they call them mind-altering substances. It changes the chemical balances in your brain. And for some people, they can experience post-acute withdrawal syndrome, all right? So after the initial withdrawal, I have met people who dealt with PAWS weeks or even months after they got clean because the brain is still trying to find equilibrium. So it is very well possible that Trisha Paytas is experiencing pause, all right? Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is this clip right here. I throw up a lot. And then I really started hitting me this past week. I started feeling run down. And in the past, when I felt run down, I would just drink because drinking, I don't feel as dependent on because I don't ever have to drink enough to be drunk as opposed to painkillers I feel like I take a lot to get numb do not do this all right like this is what I see with so many people struggling with addiction and and I get it like people struggling with addiction they don't want to get fully clean they want to figure out a way to keep drinking or using drugs. And the reality is, especially because of, you know, polysubstance use and the way that our neurons fire together, like for most people, for most people, for most people, it involves complete abstinence. So when Trisha Paytas is talking about in the past, she's tried to deal with her withdrawals with alcohol, like that is a huge no-no. And one of the reasons I'm making this video is because if you're thinking about that, don't do it. Because what happens is, is that you're just swapping one substance for another, and I get it. I did that too. Way back in the day when I was relapsing, my primary substance of choice was alcohol, and I thought that I was doing better because I switched to pills. Like, we have a problem with addiction. We have a problem with dopamine regulation. We have a problem with not knowing how to deal with life and its struggles without turning to a substance. So don't try to manage your symptoms of withdrawal with another substance, all right? But that brings up the topic of Suboxone, okay? So although some people are absolutely just getting whooshed by my videos on Suboxone, I am pro Suboxone. I just believe in a short-term taper. So what baffles me about someone like Trisha Paytas or anybody else out there, all right, who has health insurance or access to money, go see a doctor. You are not a doctor, okay? So do not try to detox on your own. Trying to quit cold turkey, trying to detox on your own, increases your chances of relapse. 
Why? Because it is freaking brutal, okay? It is rough. And when your body is in aches and pains, you're experiencing the flu or flu-like symptoms, I should say, like Trisha Paytas talks about how she keeps throwing up and everything like that, there comes a point because the voice of addiction is so strong in our heads that it says, you know what, this is way too rough, just, just do some more pills and these symptoms will go away. Kind of like how she mentioned turning to alcohol as a way to deal with these symptoms. The brain is trying to figure out a way for you to get loaded, all right? So, in my opinion, Trisha Paytas should go seek professional help and she should ask about a medication like Suboxone, okay? That will help to decrease the symptoms of withdrawal. The way Suboxone acts is that it tricks the brain into thinking that you're still using opioids. Like I said, I recommend a short-term taper, not because I'm a doctor, but because of the, the thousands of people that I've worked with, as well as based on my own personal experience. The other thing that comes up is cravings, all right? which can lead to a relapse. I personally took a medication called naltrexone, that's a pill. Then there's also a medication called Vivitrol, which is a shot that lasts for 30 days. But at the end of the day, something that I've noticed with Trisha Paytas, and this is just my unsolicited advice to anybody else out there, is monitoring Trisha Paytas's videos and behaviors for the last year or so, she, has never fully committed to working on herself. And what I mean by that is she often talks about how she's going back to therapy. And in order to go back to therapy, you have to stop going to therapy. And she's talked about this in various videos, talking about how she stops going to therapy and she has a problem connecting with therapists and everything like that. I don't know if she's still going to therapy, I hope she is. But for me, what helped me as well as millions of other people is going to 12 step meetings, okay? For us who struggle with addiction or uh, drug addiction or alcoholism, we have to get down to the root causes. Why do we turn to drugs? Why do we turn to alcohol? You see what I mean? We have to get down to that and repair that. If not, we're just gonna relapse again in the future because our life is still unmanageable, all right? like. We, we don't just drink and use to get high. We drink and use to avoid, you know, anger, to avoid sadness, to avoid loneliness, to um, increase our happiness. We find every reason under the sun to keep using drugs and alcohol. So until we find some way to heal ourselves and just to experience life, all of the good and the bad, we are going to continue on this cycle of relapse, all right? so. If you are watching this and you're somebody who struggles with an addiction, just know that there is help and you never, you never have to pick up a drink or drug again if you don't want to. Something I remember somebody saying when I first got clean was, you don't have to pick up a drink or drug again if you don't want to, and you don't have to pick up a drink or drug again even if you do want to. And ain't that the truth, all right? So anyways, if Trisha, if you see this video, Best of luck to you on your sobriety. I, I hope you are able to find the resources to help you continue this streak going and maintain your sobriety. But if anybody else out there is watching this and you're struggling, just never lose hope and remember that you can get clean and stay clean, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to support what I'm doing here and get access to our monthly Q&A and some other perks and benefits, like getting copies of my books for free, click or tap right there. All right. Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.